All right, what is up traders? What's up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. Uh, finally seeing some good action here in natural gas futures. Uh, we're gonna go over some of the different signals and buyer and sell ratings. All right, now we're going to break down the futures chart, uh, which is going to be very important, very critical if you're trying to trade something like UNG, boil, or coal. You have to remember that those are futures commodity-based ETFs. And so tracking the price of the futures is very important. We're also going to look at the spot price. Uh, this is one of the most important charts, in my opinion. I'll break down why uh, and how I like to use this chart myself. And then we'll take a look at everyone's favorite or least favorite, depending on uh, what side of the profit scale you're on. Uh, boil, that is. <clears throat> we'll break down UNG. And then we'll also break down cold. All right, we're going to take a look at all of these in today's video uh, and go over the key levels, patterns, and signals that I'm looking at right now. And I also want to mention FCG. This is one that I've mentioned time and time again, and just something I want to start bringing to more people's attention. I've mentioned this stock in the past, you know, three or four natural gas videos that I've done, uh, and we're going to go over why in today's video. It's performed much better than Boyle and UNG. We'll also just take a look at energy as a whole. Okay, I've been bullish on energy for a while. Um, we'll take a look at USO. We'll take a look at it on a weekly time frame here as well. We're on the verge of a potential very large breakout. Uh, and then we'll take a look at XLE, the energy sector of the S&P 500. And we'll take a look at an individual named Valero uh, that we've been in uh, in the Discord. Uh, now, as always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So please be sure to read through the disclaimer. And if you're new to the channel, I started a completely free newsletter for you guys called Investment Intelligence. Um, and throughout the month of March, I was actually highlighting the rotation that we were seeing in energy, the bullish setups in energy Um and so in the newsletter, you know, I just try to give out free, valuable finance and trading content. And I try to sprinkle in a uh, free trade idea every single week in there. Uh, there is a website associated with it. So you can actually go back and read some of the previous newsletters and articles that have been written and published uh, and just see if it's something that you're interested, right? If, if it's something you want to keep up with and you want those sent directly to your inbox, uh, you can go ahead and sign up using the link in the description, okay? Now, if you want to join the Investment Intelligence Discord, this is where you get access to all my different analysis, all my different trade ideas. I post over 20 different swing trade ideas every single week. And then intraday, I post day trade updates on, you know, any day trading or scalping opportunities that I'm looking at. Uh, there's many other valuable resources, uh, custom scripts and indicators inside of there, and it's only 10 bucks a month. So uh, feel free to join any of those. Links is in the description for all of those. These are what some of the trade ideas will look like, basically just highlighting the chart, the chart patterns. This was one on iClean that we had. Uh, this was another one here that we had on Intel. Um, took some profits on this one and uh, was a really nice play. I got a very small position left in Intel even to this day. Now, let's go ahead and highlight the natural gas futures, okay? As I mentioned, if you're going to be trading boil, UNG, cold, any of those things, you have to understand what the futures are doing. Uh, and currently, they look not too bad, right? Um, you know, this is trading views, technicals, uh, ratings. And you can see here, uh, the overall summary is a buy, the oscillators are a buy, and the moving averages are a buy. So <clears throat> is now the potentially the time to get into natural gas? Uh, we'll break that down and take a look. We're going to start off here with the futures on the daily time frame. And in my last video, I said, hey, this purple line right here, all right, we're going to see this uh, in a few of our charts. Uh, this is what's known as an anchored VWAP, okay? An anchored VWAP is your average volume weighted price, okay, anchored to a specific time and date, right? And what we're doing is we're actually anchoring it to whenever the futures gap down, okay? We want to see who's in control. When you're underneath the anchored VWAP, this lets you know that sellers are in control of the price action. When you're above, it lets you know that buyers are in control of the price action. And in the last video I did, I said, hey, we want to see us get back above this anchored VWAP. And you can use that as a little bit of a stop loss, right? As a little bit of a trailing stop loss. Because if we continue to go higher, this is going to go higher along with it. That's just one way to think of it, right? You could use a hard stop loss level at 1.77. That's a key level that we have right there at Fibonacci. 
Either or is fine. I'm not here to tell you guys what to do, but rather what it is that I'm looking at. Now, <clears throat> people think that double bottoms have to be precise, right? That we have to precisely double bottom here and here. Um, but oftentimes you can find a, a double bottom, you know, with a with a low and a slightly higher low here as well. Same thing with a low and a slightly lower low. So we do have a little bit of a double bottom. And our neckline in this case would actually be the 195 to about $2 price level, okay, for the natural gas futures. If we can break through there, right, our next target up above is going to be 2.172. And then there's no structure, really. There's very thin structure due to the gap being there. And we could head all the way up to 2.4. Now, that's very far from where we're at right now. And there's a lot of work to be done, most notably staying above the anchored VWAP. But that was a great sign and something that we really wanted to see. Uh, 2.417 is going to be the exact price for that gap fill. Okay. So remember, double bottom potentially forming here. A double bottom is not confirmed until you break through the neckline. Uh, and then at which point you could see a break, a breakaway, all right, and where the double bottom plays out. Or you could see a break and retest of that key zone. So keep that in mind. Now, this is the spot price chart, and the yellow horizontal line here is $2. And as you can see in this chart, whenever the price comes down to that $2 price level, it does not stay there for long, okay? Uh, this is a monthly time frame here, so keep that in mind. But each time that we come down here, we do see that price rebounds back above. And so, you know, I like to use this as a measure of, hey, you know, it's natural gas of interest to me right now. Usually if the spot price is above $2, I'm not too interested in it, right? Honestly. Uh, but we can see here that we're below that $2 threshold. And so now I'm looking at opportunities, right? Because I know historically, sometimes it may take a, a month or two. Uh, sometimes it may take six months to a year, et cetera. Uh, but eventually we end up seeing that the, the spot price rise back above that $2 price level. Uh, and this is one of the most important, if not the most important chart uh, to, uh, when it comes to natural gas, in my opinion, because this lets you know when you, I believe you should start paying attention to it and trying to come up with a plan and a time horizon uh, for uh, any potential entries, exits, or strategies um, that you're looking at in natural gas. Okay. Right? Um, so I just wanted to highlight that. I've shown that chart a few times in the past. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on now and go to boil. And so what do we have? Well, the first thing I want to highlight is we've got an anchored VWAP to our previous high. Okay. So the previous cycle high right up here, right? That is going to be our anchored VWAP, uh, where, where the VWAP is anchored. And you can see where did price reject today? We rejected exactly at that anchored VWAP. Now the futures are slightly above their anchored VWAP. There's a couple reasons for this. If you notice, Boyle made a low and then a lower low when the natural gas futures made a low and then a higher low, right? Uh, I have a completely dedicated video as to why that is. Um, there's different types of decay um, associated with things like boil uh, and UNG as well. It's going to be accelerated just a little bit more in boil due to being a leveraged ETF. Uh, but there's contango, there's volatility decay, there's many other things. And if you want to know all of the different factors and myths and truths about decay, um, you know, associated with trading things like boil and UNG, uh, you guys can look that video up and just type in decay, uh, boil, UNG, exactly trades, and it'll pop right up. Okay. Uh, if you want to go into full detail, it's a very extensive video. Uh, it's like 20, 30 minutes long, diving completely into that subject. So now that we've gotten that out the way and we understand that Contango and some other factors have caused Boil to make a lower low, keep in mind what I said about the double bottoms. Okay. You know, we still have the potential here for a double bottom to form, but this time a low and a lower low double bottom. Uh, and, you know, our neckline is going to be up here right around 19 bucks. OK, so if we can break out past there, that's when we can look for a potential double bottom to play out, breaking through that neckline. For now, we need to see Boyle get above the anchored VWAP. OK, so anchor your VWAP to the most recent cycle highs. And if we can get above there our overhead resistance is gonna be at 15, 16, right? If we can do something like this, right? Break out, get above that anchored BWAP, retest this level, look for a break and retest, push higher, then your next level is 1694. <clears throat> okay, above 1694, um, that's when we're gonna be looking to target that 19 to $20 neckline. And if we break through the neckline, um, then we could potentially be looking at a move back up to the 24 to $25 area. Okay, lots of work to be done, lots of ifs, 
but we need to go over these ifs, all right, so you guys can have a plan and help, you know, create your plan, all right? We did get a breakout here of its most recent downtrend, and I, I want to highlight something. Uh, this is something I've been trying to expose a lot more people to, uh, and it's the fact that false moves can often lead to fast moves. Now, what do I mean by a false move here? Well, we have demand, okay? We have demand established over here. We have demand. And what do we do? We break down into this demand. And this is where bears really should be taking control, right? Once you're breaking through support, breaking through demand, you would look for a break retest and then a push lower, right? That's very textbook. And what do we get? Well, we see that we have a little bit of an oops here, right? We have this fake move, this false move to the downside, creating new lows and boil. And this could be the potential start of a fast move to the upside, okay? Remember the phrase, false moves lead to fast moves. Um, and that's something we're gonna look for in boil and in natural gas. But we know that we need to get above that anchored VWAP and there's some key resistance levels we need to get above, okay? Uh, that's the one thing I wanted to highlight. We also do have a bullish divergence, okay? We're gonna see if that bullish divergence can continue to play out and perhaps give a little bit of momentum in the price action. If you're not familiar with what a bullish divergence is, take a look how we have a low here, right? And then what do we have? Well, we have another low right here, right? So we're making lower lows, right? Lower lows. But on the RSI down here, remember, this is your relative strength index. It's going to give you the relative strength of a stock, commodity, crypto, whatever it is you're looking at. And what do we see? Well, we see at the same exact point where we had a low, obviously we have a low. And here where we made a lower low, we actually created a higher low. So now we have a bullish divergence and the RSI is what's known as a leading indicator, uh, meaning it's going to tell you what could potentially happen in the future, right? Versus something like the MACD is going to tell you what's happened after it's already happened because it's a lagging indicator, right? A great example of that is look where we had the MACD crossover right here, right? The bullish MACD crossover where the white line crossed above the red line, it was after the gap up, right? After we saw a gap up in natural gas. So if you're chasing here, it's very possible that the average retail trader was chasing up here because they see, oh, we're getting a bullish MACD crossover here. And what do you see? Well, boil drops from 17 bucks down below $15. And a lot of people could have gotten stopped out here, right? Because they think, oh no, you know, I bought up here. We had a MACD crossover. It's been one day, two days of now negative price action. I'm going to stop out because we could potentially break through the lows. And that's when we actually see the rest of the movement to the upside. So uh, just a quick example on the R sign MACD, what they are, how one is a leading indicator, one is a lagging indicator, right? Now, let's talk about UNG and go over UNG's levels. Now, 1550 is going to be the key level, all right, of resistance. You can see UNG also came right down to that anchored VWAP after its short break right here of its trend. It also has bullish divergence here. And we're going to see if it can get above this anchored VWAP and buyers can start to take control of the recent price action since March. Above 1550, you're looking at 1654. And then above there, targeting 1796. Very similar setup to all three of the charts that we've looked at so far. Potential for a double bottom with a break of 1796. Let's just round it up to 18 bucks. Above 18 bucks on a, on a neckline break. All right, we're going to be looking at $20.24 as your first target. Uh, but I do want to mention we have some gaps up to fill. Okay, now we've mentioned gaps a couple of times. Uh, gaps have a tendency to fill about 90% of the time historically. Uh, the big question is when, right? So it's not always if a gap is going to fill. Um, the more important question you should be asking is, hey, when is a gap going to fill? And so we have these gaps up right here. Um, there is a chance that we could fill them. But we're not super interested. We're not targeting the gap fills right now as we're very far away from the gaps here currently. Okay, we're trading below here, right? We'd have to break the double bottom neckline and hit our price target first before we start considering any chance of seeing um, these gaps fill to the upside. Now, this is cold. Uh, and one distinction that I do want to make between, you know, what is the best one to trade, right? Whether it's UNG, whether it's boil, whether it's cold, um, if you're an options trader, something to really consider and think about is option premium, okay? Um, when a stock has more strike prices, so in the case of cold, the price is above $100, meaning that you can buy 
you know, uh, it, it's right around 140. Let's just call it right now. You can buy the 150 call options. Those are 10 strikes out of the money. Uh, you could buy the 130 uh, put options. Those are 10 strikes out of the money. And, you know, if you're correct about your move, those out of the money options are going to be cheap, uh, relatively speaking. Um, and if it comes in the money, well, then now you're going to go from having no intrinsic value on your option to having intrinsic value on the option. And if you're an options trader, um, you know, you have the ability to long or short. So being that cold is the inverse. You know, if you want a long cold, that means you think natural gas is going to go down if you want to buy some call options. And if you think natural gas is going to go up, well, then you want to get put options on cold. Uh, and if you're correct about your move, well, cold has the potential to pay you more due to the more strike prices, right? Let's say you buy one strike price out of the money. Let's say it's trading at 140 and then you buy the 141 call option and cold goes to 150. Um, you know, well, now you're nine strikes in the money and there's going to be a lot of intrinsic value in those call options. Uh, same thing with the put options, right? So, you know, if you're wondering which one could potentially be better to trade, if you're an options trader, um, cold just strictly from a premium price action movement uh, perspective. Uh, has been the one that I've been trading mostly uh, if I do trade some natural gas. It's been a lot more cold lately uh, due to the simple fact that I like to trade options, okay? Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we do have a nice little pendant, nice little triangle pattern forming here. And ultimately, we're kind of sitting in the middle to lower half of it. Um, we've got support here right at 134. If we break through 134 and break this trend line, uh, 108 is going to be our next price target to the downside. Now, Cold also, if you put an anchored VWAP to its most recent highs, this is a really great example of seeing um, what we're potentially looking for in bold uh, or in boil and UNG, where we break above the anchored VWAP, we come back and the anchored VWAP acts as support, and then we continue heading higher. Um, you know, that's if you're trying to long natural gas or you think natural gas is bullish right now, uh, that's really what you would want to see. OK, is you want to see it get above this anchored VWAP. And so now, you know, if you're if you're um, bearish uh you know on on cold okay meaning you think you know we're going to lose this anchor vwap and potentially break support um you know that that would mean that you're long natural gas and so if we lose this anchor vwap here we know that we have our support right around 134 and if we break two forms of support via the anchor vwap and our support level our fibonacci well, then uh, the odds greatly increase that we come down to that 108 area so uh, definitely be watching that when it comes to cold Right now, this is FCG. Uh, this is your first trust natural gas ETF. And the reason that I like to bring this stock to people's attention is because a lot of people do, you know, get into boil or UNG or cold uh, and they don't understand what I was mentioning earlier. A lot of the different decay factors associated with those. And again, it's because it's a commodities based ETF and, and, and you know, it, it, it holds futures contracts. OK, and so there's contango associated with that. FCG is an ETF of actual companies, right, that try to make money and are related to natural gas uh, and try to profit off of natural gas. So what you have here is much different. You don't have an ETF uh, that's buying and selling futures contracts. You have an ETF filled with actual stocks and actual companies that report earnings for, and have revenue um, and, and different things like that. And that's why you see such a dramatic difference in the price action of something like FCG. And if you would have taken this FCG trade from you know the past two or three videos, you know, it's doing very good. We just got a 100% retracement. We just completed a V-shaped recovery. And really above 2750, the next target here is going to be 3071. Now, this looks like a very clean and very textbook five-wave structure for the Elliott Wave uh, you know, if you if you know anything about Elliott wave, we got a clean one up, two down, right? And your wave twos, your corrective waves um, often come in the form of an ABC. And we got an ABC here. Then we got our next wave one up of three with an ABC correction for wave two. And then one, two, three, four, five right here, right? So five waves to complete wave three. So wave five of three. And then we had a triangle here for wave four that came in the form of an ABCDE. We got the breakout retest. And we're pushing higher now. Again, above 2750, the next target is 3071. But if this is really going to be a larger long-term trend, 
and we see that, hey, this is basically one giant bull flag that we have right here. Um, ultimately, you know, we're going to be looking at $35 to $40 to the upside uh, for FCG. Now, it's not going to move as fast. It's not going to be as volatile as something like Boyle or UNG. Um, but when it comes to, you know, the potential for capital preservation and less risk, okay, uh, so easier to manage risk, um, FCG is definitely something to consider and just to really look into uh, and, and, and dive a little bit more, right? I just wanted to bring that to y'all's attention. It's trying to break out of its bearish divergence that it's had on the weekly RSI, right? Um, if it can break out of this, oftentimes that can lead to a breakout in the price action and in the candlestick chart. Uh, so we'll see if that's going to happen, if we're going to get some follow through there. Now, this is USO on the daily time frame. All right, this is the oil ETF. Um, and again, just another example of the anchored BWAPs, guys. We have the previous cycle high anchored BWAPs. We see we have a false move here that led to a fast move down. And then what do you know? We break out, we reclaim that anchored BWAP as support. And ever since then, buyers have been in control and we've seen USO break out. Okay, I've been posting this chart for a while. I've been covering energy in the Discord. And as I mentioned in March, I actually wrote two newsletters on energy, highlighting a lot of these same exact charts that we're looking at right now, just at previous conditions back when they were over here in this time frame. Now, I'm long energy. I've got some long energies. Uh, VLO is one that we'll take a look at the chart. That's an individual stock. That's Valero. We've got XLE. Um, VLO is pretty profitable. Um, so I'm, I've trimmed that one up and I've put a little bit of those profits into XLE uh, just to diversify a little bit more. Um, XLE obviously is going to be more diversified, right? And these are screenshots from today's profits, um, from, you know, from, from the profits that we had on them today. Uh, but the, here's a weekly time frame, okay? Energy looks really good, like it does have the potential to really go on a breakout. Now, we're, there's lots of work to be done. But when you look at this long weekly downtrend, you know, if we can break above 83, we're potentially looking at $95 and potentially $115 on oil, okay? Now, that's going to be pretty bad for the economy, in my opinion, because oftentimes higher energy prices can lead to higher inflation prices. And we all know that Jerome Powell and CPI uh, is something that's still very relevant to the market today uh, when it comes to the stock market as a whole. Um, but, you know, I've been adding into energy and getting into energy because saying, hey, this is going to be a good hedge for the portfolio. And as we've continued to see it develop, we've really just seen continued rotation in energy and some rotation out of other sectors in the market. Uh, this is XLE right here. Uh, nice ascending triangle bullish pattern. We just broke out today. Uh, and what do you see? You know, overhead supply tested one, two, three, four times. We just broke our recent downtrend and we just broke out of here, making new highs, closing up at around $95 today in XLE. We've got the $95 calls, I believe, and some $100 calls. So we're going to see, you know, does this turn into a false move up here, right? Um, you know, a, a false breakout to the upside that could potentially lead to a fast move to the downside. Or is energy really going to stay bullish? I mean, if you look at this, it's been almost a straight line since the year started. XLE was actually one of the top, if not the top performing sector in the S&P 500 for the year of 2024 for Q1. And we're continuing to see that, um, you know, even more today as the new week has started uh, in the new quarter, All right? Above $95, we're looking at potential breakout target here of 102.84. Um, you know, that's what I'm looking at in XLE, okay? Um, now this is Valero. This is another energy name. This is an individual ticker. And, this looks very similar to the XLE, doesn't it? You have the overhead supply, you have the uptrend line forming an ascending triangle. I would love to see XLE perform the way that VLO did, right? Um, VLO was showing a lot more strength, so I hopped into VLO early, uh, and sometimes those early entries can you know, bite you in the butt, uh, but whenever you see lots of strength and market strength and strength on a relative basis, um, I tend to follow that strength and VLO just hit its second bullish price target today of 172. Uh, so really nice play there. Uh, we're going to see if it dances in between here between 172 and 166.50. Uh, otherwise, you know, this thing could potentially continue heading higher. Uh, ultimately, we'll just have to see. RSI is getting pretty frothy here, uh, but it has gone up higher before in the past. Uh, so ultimately, we'll just see where things are going. Energy as a whole. 
uh, has been looking great. Natural gas, not so much. And we'll see maybe if natural gas is going to catch up a little bit now and potentially start to participate in the rally that we've seen oil and energy stocks participate in as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want access to all my analysis and all my different trade ideas, uh, join the Discord, okay? It's 10 bucks a month. There's a link in the description there for that. Um, you can sign up for the newsletter if you want something free. That's completely free. Uh, there's a website associated with it, remember, so you can go back and you can keep up with it via the website or just check the website out whenever you feel like it. Or if it's something that you feel like you want sent directly to your inbox, uh, you can register for that, again, using the link in the description. And I've also got a Ko-Fi page. Okay, now the Ko-Fi page is basically the best way to reach out to me if you're not on the Discord. Um, you know, there's a link in the description for the Ko-Fi page. And that's where you can book a coaching session. Um, over the years, over the past two years, really, I've had a, a lot of coaching sessions with people um, specifically about boil and cold. I would say that, you know, maybe half or over half of all of my coaching sessions that I've done in the past two years have been related to people trading natural gas, uh, whether it's, you know, they want to go over some day trading dynamics, swing trading ideas, uh, or they got a bunch of questions they want to ask, or maybe it's just how to, um, you know, trade options, right? And how can you, um, you know, use options to hedge yourself? How can you use options to leverage your position that you have in shares uh, to potentially get free hedges and different things like that? Um, you know, all the Discord members get 20% off. Uh, but you just have to click on the commissions tab here and in there you can book a 30 minute or a one hour coaching session. Um, and yeah, that'll wrap up today's video. Okay. I appreciate y'all watching. And if you enjoyed it, uh, most likely you're going to enjoy this next video here too. So be sure to click on that one.